Okay, let's talk about something fun. Democrats. Well, it's fun to dog on Democrats. Who are the worst Democrats in America? And look, you understand, anyone who watches this show at all understands how hard I am often on Republicans. I'm probably harder on Republicans and Democrats because I expect them to actually fight for us and they never do, a bunch of losers. But we should take some time now and then to focus on the dirty commies. That's what the Democrat Party is. It's the anti-American party, the Communist Party. The communists who infiltrated this country a long time ago recognized very early on, this is the party for us. This is the party for us. And why is that? Because Democrats hate America, communists hate America. It really was a match made in heaven. They had to find people who wanted to burn it down. So who are the worst of them? You're probably tempted to say Joe Biden. It's very tempting right now. And I don't blame you. I don't know that there is a wrong answer here. I will give you my answer, but I don't think Joe Biden's the right answer. Simply because if you ask me if I wanted my enemy to be extremely sharp, conniving, capable, or if I wanted him to be kind of a moron, well, obviously I would want my enemy to be a moron. I don't want him to be brilliant. I want him to be like Joe Biden. And Joe Biden obviously is not brilliant. Now, I'm not dismissing the damage he's done as president, but you and I, we both know it's mainly the communists around him. Uh, Joe's not actually destroying anything. He's not even capable of doing so. But Joe Biden is a very terrible guy. He is a very terrible guy and has been for a long time, not just because he opened up the border. Joe Biden is mean and nasty and thinks he's a gangster. That's why he has no problem threatening you all the time. Donald Trump and the MAGA Republicans represent an extremism that threatens the very foundations of our republic. You've been patient, but our patience is wearing thin. And your refusal has cost all of us. And by the way, if they want to think to, is to take on government, if we get out of line, which they're talking again about, well, guess what? They need F-15s. They don't need it. A rifle. Remember when he told us he was losing patience with us? <laughs> Who exactly do you think you are, sir? So, okay, you're, Joe Biden's bad, but there's a lot of bad ones. Adam Schiff, I know you know the name. I know you know the face sitting on top of that toothpick of a neck. Adam Schiff, he could easily have run away with the winner on this one because Adam Schiff did what all Democrats do now. He used his position. He used the access he had as being part of the government, access to information. He weaponized it to use it against you, against Trump. You remember Schiff. Can you agree that there has been no evidence of collusion coordination or conspiracy that has been presented thus far between the Trump campaign and Russia? Uh, no, I don't agree with that at all. I think there's plenty of evidence of collusion or conspiracy in plain sight. I've certainly, certainly said that there's ample evidence of collusion. So circum all you have right now is a circumstantial case. Uh, actually, no, Chuck. Uh, I, I can tell you that the case is more than that. Uh, so you Director have Clapper. seen direct evidence of collusion? Uh, I don't want to go into specifics, but I will say that there is evidence that is not circumstantial. Uh, and, uh, and is very much worthy of investigation. A growing body of evidence of uh, obstruction of justice. There is circumstantial evidence of collusion. There is direct evidence, I think, of deception. We already do know what happened. The evidence of the president's misconduct is already overwhelming. There was no evidence. This is a human being who had access to things you didn't. And he repeatedly went on television and said, I've seen things, there's evidence. And he lied about all of it. That human being should be in prison. He really, he really should. You can't do that. We've gotten so used to these things now that we've just accepted horrible things as normal. You can't do that with your position in government, but he did. And speaking about uncomfortable, let's get uncomfortable and let's talk about Eric Swalwell. Let's talk about the fact he went on national television and he farted uncontradicted that the president used taxpayer dollars to ask the Ukrainians to help him cheat an election. All right, quit. We're not talking about the farting. That's understandable, Eric. We've all had bratwurst night. 
Let's talk about the fact that he's on the House Intelligence Committee. He was on the House Intelligence Committee and he had an affair with a Chinese spy. You understand the House Intelligence Committee has access to everything. If you ever are on Capitol Hill, I've been up there more than once, sadly, and you happen to breeze by the Armed Services Committee room or the Ways and Means Committee room, you'll find that they're just rooms. Oftentimes the doors are unlocked. You can go in and check them out, especially if they're in session, go in, sit down. You don't get to do that at the House Intelligence Committee. You will find a sealed door with armed guards, and if you try to go in unauthorized, you will die. That's how important the secrets are in there. While Eric Swalwell worked in there, he was having an affair with Fang Fang. We have a country full of dirty traitors. Look, we can talk about Jerry Nadler, another man who pooped his pants. We won't go into that right now. We could talk about how many people we could. You know what? Speaking of Nadler, remember when he said this? Two-year-olds should have been required to wear masks. It would be child abuse for parents not to do that because there was no vaccination available for two-year-olds. Two-year-olds. That's child abuse. And the, how do you pick a Democrat? We, do we pick one of the members of the squad, AOC, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Flea, Bayana Presley? Well, there are so many to choose from, and we're going to talk to so many incredible guests tonight as we try to figure out who the winner is. But rest assured, I am going to pick a winner, all right? All that may have made you uncomfortable, but I am right. We'll dive into California next. community banks. So the importance of community banks is they are, as they are called, they're in the community, led by members of the community. They are <laughs> people who understand the capacity of the community, the needs of the community, the culture of the community. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't, I even just snorted there, I'm laughing, I just can't. Joining me now, John Phillips of The Great John Phillips Show. John, you know what floors me about this? Is obviously this happens all the time with Dome. She's always doing this kind of word salad disaster stuff. But it's her age, right? It's, this is not, this is not a 15 year old girl who doesn't know how to have a conversation yet. She's 57 or 58, something like that. How is she still, like this, I don't understand as an adult how you can still be like this at that age. I've never met one that age like that. She reminds me of one of these schools, if you're a fan of college football, where the first three games of the season, they play teams that no one's ever heard of and advertises on Maury. And they win each game by 50, 60 points. And then by the time they actually go out and play a real school, they play someone who has, I don't know, have they have money to recruit, they have money to have the proper equipment, the proper coaching, and they go out and they just get destroyed. She is someone who's never had to operate in a competitive environment before, and she's just always had people in charge greasing the skids for her, whether it is Willie Brown or, or other people. And now that she's on the national stage and she has to carry her own weight, she doesn't know how to operate. This is her peak performance. What you saw there was not her having a brain freeze. That is Kamala Harris. And Kamala Harris, by the way, I know this is about America's most dangerous Democrats. She is the insurance policy that keeps Joe Biden on the ticket because if it weren't for her, they would probably replace him. The fact that she is there keeps Joe Biden as the Democratic nominee. Okay, help. Help me understand, help all of us understand the California Democrat machine then, John, because obviously I know California is blue. <laughs> That's not exactly breaking news. Very, very blue, very hard left. But it is a huge state. I can't even count how many media outlets are there. This is not some tiny backwater. And this woman has navigated all of that. AG senator from the state of California is like a really, really, really big deal. She's made her way up there somehow. How? She was totally dysfunctional when she was here. It's just 
when you look at the newspaper clippings on Kamala Harris as a politician in California, it was always primarily biographical. She's the first woman to do this. She's the first Asian to do that. She's the first black woman here. She's the first black woman there. But they didn't report on how she performed as, let's say, Attorney General of California. And that office is a big office. You're talking about a massive department in a big state. And there are listeners to my radio show who worked in that department when she was in charge of it. And they talk about this totally dysfunctional place that just did not function on any level. She was a horrible manager. She would focus on things that were just truly strange, like she wanted to go after truants. She really wanted to crack down on truancy. She thought that that would make her look really tough on crime. Um, and she just picked these bizarre pursuits and she put all of her time and energy into those things and she just dropped the ball on all the big picture stuff. But if no one's reporting on it, if no one's paying attention to it, then how do you know? If you're on the inside, you know. If you're not on the inside, you have no idea. God, it's so it's so revealing and it's just so where we are, honestly, on a larger level as a country, John. We look at these morons who lead the country and it just moron after moron after moron. And we say to ourselves, at least I do, how could that person get to that position? You know, how could these people are the ones who run the most powerful country on earth? And apparently that they just were never vetted. 60, 70 years old, running the United States of America, never having faced scrutiny at all. You fail up the food chain. And if you notice, a lot of the problem children in the Biden administration come from California. It's not just her, but look at Javier Becerra, who is the Secretary of Health and Human Services. He has been a complete disaster for them. You look at Eric Garcetti, the, the ambassador to India. He barely got enough votes to get through the U.S. Senate. And it's not by accident that so many of the problem children come from here. None of them are vetted. None of them are tested. None of them have to prove themselves. They just have to be the candidate the machine wants for a specific office. And if the machine puts them there, then they get there and the press writes glowing profiles on them. And no one has any idea that they're completely incompetent. And then you have poor Grampy Joe, who's just looking at this young, attractive senator from California. You go, OK, well, she was an attorney general. She was a district attorney. She has to have some kind of reasonable portfolio. Let's go with her. And they had absolutely no clue what they were buying. Speaking of having no clue what they're buying, Gavin Newsom's out there putting out videos like this. He's quite the border hawk. 390 uh, National Guards men and women that have been working, particularly as it relates to fentanyl here in the state of California. Look at the bottom line at the end of the day. They need more resources. Everybody needs more resources. And the Republican Party has been consistently standing in the way of providing the resources, the support for the men and women working hard, not only here at the border, but out throughout the state of California and this country to address the issues related to the border. It's time for them to stop playing politics. It's time for the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, to stop playing politics politics and do the right thing. First of all, I don't know how you can rise to be position of governor of California and not understand to get your phone out of the wind when you're trying to record videos. That's one. Two, the way this dude lies is honestly, I'm so used to these people, John, I almost admire how smooth that reptile just lies. If the late great Chick Hearn, the legendary Laker broadcaster were around, he'd say the mustard's off the hot dog for him. Gavin Newsom was a guy who thought he was going to be president. He thought maybe even this cycle that Joe Biden would have some kind of health event, would step aside. Gavin Newsom would be the guy. Didn't happen. And I believe that he probably has now missed his window. Right now, he's dealing with a massive budget deficit in California, while other states, including the one that you're sitting in right now in the state of Texas, are looking at budget surpluses. He's looking at a crime wave that is just producing bonkers crime story after bonkers crime story in every newscast in the state. And what he's doing with, with stories like that, with crime and homelessness and, and other problems plaguing the state, is he's just declaring victory and saying, oh yeah, we solved that. There's no crime in Oakland. Oakland's a very safe city. It doesn't matter if people are stealing Kias and using them as battering rams to go into 7-Elevens to tie the ATM to the Kia and peel out in the traffic. 
we got that taken care of. Just don't worry about it. Problem solved, mission accomplished, and no one is buying it. And there's no way for him to escape these stories. He's very angry right now at the California Press Corps, which is funny because so many of them lean to the left. But we cover the crime stories because the crime stories are, are totally bonkers. And from his point of view, if we just stopped covering the crime stories, then people would understand that he's doing a very good job. And it, he's coming apart at the seams right now. And he's trying to mask all of his failures back at home by getting involved in all of these national subjects that he has nothing to do with. You played the video of him at the border. He would love to talk about the border because that's a federal issue. He travels to other states and goes after them on their abortion policies. Well, those are issues that aren't really impacting the state of California. He has to try to shift the subject because if he talks about the job that he's doing here, there's no way to make him look good. Uh, John, I don't know how you do it, but keep on keeping on in that state full of nutballs. John Phillips, my friends. All right. I don't know. I don't know which is worse. I really don't. California or New York. Let's talk to Joseph Pinion about that next. He's a New Yorker. Hang on. I think the world's most deliberative body has been reduced to kabuki theater. There's no uncertainty ever. The only time you get to offer an amendment in this place is if it's sure to fail. Think about that. Senator Schumer won't allow United States senators to offer ideas unless he knows they will fail. And how about instead of every hour Maybe you show up, or you, what, what if we sat in our seats and actually voted on this stuff for four or five hours? We could get through a lot, but the senator from New York is allergic to work. The Senate is broken. Indeed it is. And Chuck Schumer broke it on purpose. Joining me now, I have a lot of respect for this man. He's the guy who tried to take him out in an election. He ran against Chuck Schumer in New York for Senate. Joseph Pinion III. Joseph Chuck Schumer is a really, really bad guy, isn't he? Well, look, when we ran for U.S. Senate in 2022, I said I quit my job for a very clear reason, uh, that if we are tired of the world as it is, we have to stop voting for the architects who built it and broke it. And Chuck Schumer's fingerprints are on everything that has gone wrong in this country that we love. He's been down in D.C. longer than I have been alive over 40 years and counting uh, and then what he has done is turn the most limited body uh, into a smaller version of the food fight we see in the house and whether he's undermining the prime minister of israel at a time when israel needs our help more than ever before the highest ranking jewish elected official in the history of this country doing so by the way or whether he's just pretending that the migrant crisis is a figment of our imagination he has taken actions that have left us less safe he has undermined the sovereignty of this nation and he has continued to undermine the safety and security of the world as we know it what is this guy's deal? You know, a lot of people, everyone watching this show knows Chuck Schumer, Joseph. They all know who he is. They all know his, they, they get that, but he's not that well known as far as his background goes and the dirty crap he's pulled. We know he's a Senate majority leader now. We know we don't like him. What's his deal? Where'd he come from? Well, look, uh, he is a man that went straight from a Harvard Law School campus uh, to the New York State Assembly. He went straight from the Assembly to Congress. He went straight from Congress uh, to the United States Senate. He's never worked an honest day in the private sector in his entire life. The last thing that Chuck Schumer did for everyday Americans was what we call the Schumer box. Uh, it's that little box that you get uh, in the mail from your credit card company that has to detail exactly uh, how much interest you have to pay. Uh, but as a result of him being there for so long, he has passed policies that have left us with private actual uh, actual balances on those credit cards uh, being the highest it's ever been in recorded history. Uh, we're, we're over a trillion dollars in personal credit card debt at the highest average interest rate we have seen since 1994 when we started tracking the statistic at over 20%. So these are the realities that we're facing here. 
And whether it's him writing an obscure letter uh, to a bank in California in the middle of the financial crisis that had nothing to do with the financial crisis, and in part leading to one of the largest bank collapses we have seen until recent, or whether it's just him showing up with a podium to talk about something as obscure as legroom on airlines, he has done very little to help anybody but himself. He has risen in power. He collects more money from Wall Street than anybody else in the United States Senate, all while railing against the private industry that makes America the envy of the world. Up is down, left is right, and as long as Chuck Schumer is talking, you know America's in trouble. Yeah, no doubt. And the Democrats, their big cheese in the House is somebody even lesser known, but somebody very, very capable. I've been warning people about him for some time. Hakeem Jeffries, Nancy Pelosi doesn't just hand power to anybody. The fact that she handed power to Hakeem Jeffries tells me that as bad as a human being as this guy may be, very, very savvy political operator and probably a proficient fundraiser to take that role, right? Look, Hakeem Jeffries is there for one reason and one reason only, because he can be trusted by Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer not to rock the boat. And by rocking the boat, we mean actually looking after the interests of the people that call America home. And so he is another individual that has mollified the left uh, during uh, this insane thrust for Americans to be on the side of Hamas in the aftermath of those October 7th attacks. He is the same person that finds common ground and common purpose with those individuals yelling from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, a call for effectively the annihilation of the Jewish people. Uh, he is the same person uh, who has decided he's going to spend $40 million uh, targeting those New York House congressional seats and in many ways helped make up the majority uh, in this thin majority that Republicans have shared here in the House uh, this term. So, yeah, he is a problem. He is a threat. Democrats, unlike us sometimes, they are rowing uh, in sync from the top to the bottom. And yet, even though we still have a senator from New Jersey on trial for corruption, gold bars found in the walls of his house uh, connected to an armed robbery. And there's not a single Democrat to be found who seems to think that might be the kind of thing that should lead to somebody being removed from Congress since you ran George Santos out of Congress. I don't know. But it shows you that the principles are not consistent, that the outrage is not actually sincere. They care about power for the sake of power only. And ultimately, in the end, the people who have the least amongst us, those who have that solemn vote to give Democrats, they take it, they abuse it, and they tell us we're not allowed to talk about your troubles until the next election, because right now the only thing that matters is beating Republicans. We've been beating ourselves in the nation for far too long. Oh, it's so true. Bob Menendez with gold bars. <laughs> yeah, lots of Cubans just have gold bars associated with armed burglary <laughs> in the walls of their homes. Uh, just more <laughs> insanity on the political left of this nation. It is. It's just crazy. A lot of people forget about this video where Jerry Nadler he pooped his pants. Here he was. Work on this subject, not part of this package, but part of uh, preserving our, our our democracy. With that, I'm pleased to yield to the distinguished chairwoman. Hey, Jerry, we've all been there. But setting aside the pants situation, Joseph, people don't understand how bad of a guy this guy is to, again, a New Yorker. What is with this state? Well, you know, we used to have what I call an American ingenuity pipeline that went from New York to California. I was reminded recently, we built the Empire State Building in a year uh, with steel. It was called here in the United States of America. We had the Golden State Bridge out in California. Go West, young man, go West, right? They manifest destiny. And now we have the reverse here. We have ideas that are born in California uh, out of an earnest desire to destroy the country as we know it. Uh, they metastasize like a cancer. They come to New York, they get implemented by some of the most powerful Democratic politicians in the country, from Chuck Schumer to Jerry Nadler to Hakeem Jeffries. And in the end, uh, they just become a petri dish for them to try to take it 
all the way to D.C. to codify across this nation. And so that is why every town has become a border town with Chuck Schumer and Joe Biden and Jerry Nadler uh, on the prowl uh, because they told us it was a figment of our imagination. They told us the fentanyl crisis was just a Republican talking point. But we have the bodies of dead children and the coffins to go along with it to show people that it was not a Republican talking point. It was abject neglect brought to us by individuals who do not care about you. And so, yes, the return to normal president, Joseph Robinette Biden, has on his watch taken us back to a world in disarray. He has built a new axis of evil with a Chinese Communist Party and Russia. And obviously you've got the the good folks out there in North Korea who are now meeting with Putin. So he's got them all stitched together. And we're over here in a lurch because we don't have the actual backbone in 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue to push back against Putin. You tell China that they're not going to set up police stations in our neighborhoods, put spy balloons in the sky above us, uh, and also just, by the way, buy up all the farmland that just happens to be next to some of the most important military bases in this country. And again, it's just been three years in power for these buffoons. Yeah. Joseph, Come back soon. I've missed you, brother. Thank you. I appreciate it. God bless you, my friend. We'll talk. All right. Let's talk about Barack Obama. Because he's not gone. You know it. I know it. He's very much involved. Very much involved. Let's talk about him next. what you know now do you wish like you had a sec a, a, a third term um and i i used to say you know what if if i could make an arrangement where um i had a i had a, a stand-in a front man or front woman and and they had an earpiece in and i was just in my basement in my sweats mm -hmm. looking through the stuff and then i could sort of deliver the lines but somebody else was uh, doing all the talking and ceremony, wow. I, I'd be fine with it. Wouldn't that be crazy? If there was a system in place where Obama was still running things, but you kind of had this cadaver-like person just saying the words and doing the things Obama wanted, wouldn't that be wild? Joining me now, Dr. Jerome Corsi. Uh, he's incredible. Everyone knows who Dr. Corsi is. He authored the book, The Obama Nation. Doctor, wouldn't that be insane to just imagine <laughs> a world where Obama was really pulling the strings? Isn't that so far-fetched? Yeah, well, it, it couldn't possibly be true. Well, of course it is. I mean, how can you have a president that's obviously suffering senior dementia and Joe Biden can barely get off stage and that? fundraiser where Obama had to take him by the arm and lead him off stage. I, I think the only better president that Obama could have at this point and the CIA to run the country as a deep state would be a, a weekend at Bernie's. Maybe they could find a dead guy that they could do AI over and <laughs> pretend he was alive. But other than that, I guess Joe Biden, it, you know, how could you have somebody of this mental in, incapacity running a country? I mean, it's absurd. It's almost like a bad Saturday Night Live routine, you know, I mean, but it's true. And Obama is clearly behind the scenes pulling the strings. These are Obama's policies. Obama said he wanted to fundamentally transform America. I warned people that he was a Marxist, that he hated America. He wanted to destroy America. And in fact, that's what's going on. And we have now rampant critical race theory. Obama was supporting critical race theory when he was at Harvard. And so this is, this is part of his whole DNA. And now destroying America will be his legacy. We, you know, the between people say, well, Biden is the worst president we've had. No, Obama is the worst president we've had. And Obama has intentionally taken this country down uh, and supported open immigration. He supported radical Islam, supported Iran. He sent airplanes full of cash to Iran. You know, we have uh, the Democrats in the State Department wanting to push NATO right to the border of Russia and having CIA camps along the border with Russia. The Democrats have hated Russia since the Berlin Wall went down and Russia renounced communism. These Democrats are neo-Marxist and Obama is running the country and he wasn't joking, he was telling the truth. Doctor, people forget 
I can't believe they forget, probably just blocking it out of their memory, just how much damage that man did from 2008 to 2016. Recap it for us, because I remember it all like it was yesterday. Well, I mean, it, it goes on and on. He started with radicalizing race. You know, he had this uh, professor at Harvard who was locked out of his house, and Obama immediately said this was an instance of racial discrimination. It turned out the policeman had been doing all kinds of sensitivities, trainings, and Obama had to have a beer summit with him. You'll remember that. Then we had various shootings. The, you know, we had the original, uh, you know, hands up, don't shoot incident. And Eric Holden flies into to Kansas City and says it's the, again, the police who are at fault, radicalizing all of these inst incidents. We've had the uh, move towards Iran and the opening up of relationships with Iran, not having sanctions on Iran. We've had uh, the economy being in free fall. Obama had to spend billions of dollars in 2007, 2008. Remember the shovel ready project that didn't produce any shovel ready jobs. And yet then we had the Solyndra with all of the wasted first round of money on wind and solar, which don't work. I mean, it goes on and on and on the transgenderism and the support of transgenderism. Uh, we've, we actually found the birth certificate from which Obama's was was forged, and that was proven by Sheriff Arpaio. Spent four years and did forensic examinations in laboratories, even internationally. I found the birth certificate from which Obama's was forged. We don't know who this guy is, except we know he's lied about everything about himself all the way through. Reverend White, hating America, the GD America speech. Uh, his homosexuality, which he suppressed. Uh, Larry Sinclair, it goes on and on. Everything Obama has presented to the American people has been a lie. And when he talks the truth, he goes to Cairo. I was in Israel in 2009 when he said he'd experienced Islam on three continents, yet he denied being a Muslim. He was in school as a child in Indonesia, registered as a Muslim. Obama is nothing but lies. And his background is not verifiable because as far as I'm concerned, he looks like a CIA legend. And his strings are being pulled by the globalists. And he's systematically now what we're experiencing under Biden. These are deep state policies that Obama is implementing in conjunction with the CIA and the military industrial complex. We have perpetual wars. And by supporting Iran, we can assure perpetual wars in the Middle East. And Biden is doing it again, including sending long-range missiles now to uh, to Ukraine, which can hit Russia. And this is, this is going to push us into World War III. These are depopulationists. They think there's too many people. And Obama would easily see billions of people die, not, not bad an eye, I believe. I believe as well. Speaking of somebody hiding something, Michelle Obama, there are rumors she might run for the big job of the presidency. What do you make of that? Well, I'm very close to Joel Gilbert, and Joel did a whole video on it, tracing her background, where she has really done everything she can to be white, run away from black people. Uh, she's another fraud. Again, we see her as a very angry, um, you know, racially motivated um, during the 20, uh, 2008 campaign, 2008 campaign, when she was just angry all the time. And if she got into the White House, I think we would just be more polarized. We again would raise questions about who she is, what she believes in. You know, when these people are presenting themselves as a facade, because they know if they presented, if Obama and Michelle presented their true beliefs, no one would vote for them. And, and they're elitists. They live in, you know, they've got mansions. They live a life of luxury. They came up. Obama was living on his credit cards before he ran for president. And now, now they've got millions of dollars. They're international celebrities. And they continue to lie about their politics. If she runs, she'll be out talking about racial harmony. But she is going to be 100% on the critical race theory. She'll be for transgenderism. She'll be for pushing the entire redistribution of income. She will not care about the middle class. The middle class in America is being destroyed. And these people's policies, uh, I warned in 2008 that Obama would destroy America. 
We become more racially polarized after Obama. The economy would be worse, that we would have a diminished position in the world's geopolitics. You know, our military right now could probably run a transgender parade up Fifth Avenue better than it could fight a war. We left a billions of dollars of military equipment in Afghanistan and abandoned as if we were thieves in the night. Uh, and now we're seeing the war expanding in Israel with Gaza. I think the next thing Israel will do is take on Hezbollah in Lebanon, that Iran and, and Israel have already exchanged fire with each other directly. Uh, this could easily turn into a, a nuclear confrontation, just like Ukraine could, especially if NATO and the United States keep upping the ante with more advanced weaponry that has a greater potential to spiral into a, not only a proxy war, but a direct war between NATO and Russia, the United States and Russia. Why these people want to go to war with Russia is beyond me, except that the Democrats, as I said, have in love with Russia when it was communist in 1917, in love with all Russia's ideas of Marxism and socialism, powered Piven theory and the rest, spend money, spend money, spend money, and redistribute income. And that was one of the major themes of Obama's 2008 election, if you'll recall. He had a debate with, I believe, a plumber about redistributing income. Uh, the, the, yeah, he did. The, press, the press has covered for Obama massively. And, you know, his speaking ability, his glibness, he's got hip hop, he hops down the stairs, you know, he can do the Beyonce and he can do all the, you know, the, the hip things. But at heart, he hates America and he's a radical Marxist. And beyond a Marxist, yeah, he'll bad. end up with the he'll end up with the transhuman group supporting them in the World Economic Forum should they win. No doubt about it. Doctor, thank you so much. Dr. Drome Corsi, everybody, no doubt. The bad dude, not Obama is a bad dude. We're not done yet. Hang on. All right. So who's the winner? Who's the worst Democrat in America? Well, worst? What does it mean? What does that mean? Is it the most obnoxious? No, for me, if we're dealing with an enemy, if I want to save the country, if I want America to be great, and they want America to be destroyed, then the one who's the worst is the one who's most effective. That's the truth. There's a Democrat who is so effective she frightens me. Her name's Nancy Pelosi. Will you commit to serving your full two-year term for the people of San Francisco? What is this? What is this? Don't bother me with a question like that. <laughs> really? Really? Okay? Is that what I'm going to do? Yeah. Madam, I don't, those kind of questions are such a waste of my time. No, I'm a, yes, sir. She's tough. And she's smart. And she's a huge fundraiser. You see, you, me, it can be easy for us to get wrapped up in the sound bites. Did you see what AOC said, Joe Biden? But the human being who has been working behind the scenes for the last 20, 30 years, moving the evil Democrat cause forward, her name is Nancy Pelosi. She has been running circles around Republicans in negotiations for a long time. Have you noticed that she regularly, at least she did when she was speaker and leader, Democrat minority leader, you notice how she always managed to whip her entire Congress into going the way she wanted them to go? Do you have any idea how difficult it, that is? Oh, you probably do because you see how the loser Republicans. How many times does Democrat legislation get passed because we can't seem to keep all the Republicans together. You always have a bunch of low T weenies who go, well, I'm not really sure. How many times did you watch Nancy Pelosi go through that? Not hardly any, because Nancy Pelosi has a strong grip on her party. They all owe her favors, top to bottom, including Joe Biden, her ability to fundraise for her party is absurd. Nancy Pelosi is really, really good at what she does. 
and that's what makes her the worst. And I'm worried about Hakeem Jeffries, I am. He took over after her. And the only way they would have ever have allowed that to happen is if he was a very sharp, capable human being, too. So this is a guy, he's going to be good. He's going to do a lot of damage to this country by being a good Democrat. He's going to be a good fundraiser. He's going to be a do. A, he's going to do a lot of things. But I'll tell you, as someone who understands full well what she's capable of, I'm thrilled that Nancy Pelosi is retiring. She has been a thorn in the side of this country for a very, very, very long time, and I'm happy she's gone. Now that said, if there are any Republicans out there who are looking for someone to emulate in Congress. That's the one you should emulate. And I know you don't like her, and I obviously don't like her. Who could possibly like that Corella DeVille witch? But she was really good at what she did, and she had guts, and she kept her conference in line. And that's more than you can say about any of these GOPers. Give me a Nancy Pelosi. Give me 10 of her. We'll save this place. Worst Democrat in America, Nancy Pelosi. And she has been for a very, very, very long time. All right. We'll do it again.